After an hour of this, I had the sick feeling in me. I believe they were right. I got to listen to more booze over the next 24 hours, walking through the hotel, going to the airport. It was like I helped the Russians throw the Olympics. Kate, Kate took up at least a dozen rows on the plane. Meanwhile, back at our home in Michigan, the, lo the local beautification committee had dumped three truckloads of horse manure in our driveway, waist high, so that we wouldn't be able to enter our property. A property which, by the way, was nicely redecorated with a dozen or so signs nailed to our trees. Get out. Move to Cuba. Tommy scum. Traitor. Leave now or else. It was time to call in the Navy SEALs. And then, I'm just going to skip to the end, I, made, I hired this group that, that essentially are ex-Navy SEALs and Army Rangers, and uh, they became my security. And I go through the, in this chapter and I go through the various incidences of uh, people uh, assaulting me, trying to assault me, and finally somebody uh, attempting or planning to uh, blow up on my house. And um, these SEALs um, basically saved me and uh, kept me alive. And I, in the book, describe these incident, incidents uh, uh, really for the first time. Um, because, you know, you're not supposed to talk about these things in, in public. Um, so there you go, this is it. here's the end of that, uh, that chapter. One night in Aventura, Florida, oh, this is after, I, basically, as part of my, tra I, tra I started training with the Navy SEALs, and, uh, you know, lifting weights and walking, then running uh, with them, and they showed me all these various things that, how they can take you out with a piece of dental floss, and uh, things you probably shouldn't know, but anyway, so I was like, now I was in condition. One night in Aventura, Florida, my new buff self, along with a friend, we were walking into the mall to see a movie. A young guy in his 30s passed by me, and as he did, he had this to say, shithead. He continued on his walk. I stopped and turned towards him. Hey, you, come back here. <clears throat> um, the person I was with said, Mike, uh, let it go. But letting it go is what I used to do, and that didn't really help the hater, did it? The guy kept walking. Hey, don't run away from me, I shouted louder. Don't be a chicken. Come back here and face me. Chicken is a dish not well served to the gender with testosterone for their fluid. He abruptly halted and turned and headed back toward me. And as he got five feet from me, I said the following in the gentlest voice I could muster. Hey, man, why would you say such a thing to me? He steered and steeled himself for a fight. Because I know who you are, and you're a shithead. Now, there you go again, using that word. You have the foggiest idea of who I am, or what I'm really about. You haven't even seen one of my movies. I don't need to. He replied, confirming what I already suspected. I already know the commie stuff you put out there. Okay, dude, that's not fair. You can't judge me based on what someone else has told you about me. You look way smarter than that. You look like a guy who makes up his own mind. Please watch one of my movies. I swear to God, you may not agree with all the politics, but I can guarantee you that you will instantly know that I have a deep love for this country. And you will see that I have a heart that I care for people, and I promise that you'll laugh a few times during the film. And if you still want to call me a shit in after that, that's fine. But I don't think you will. He calmed down, and we talked for another five minutes. I listened to his complaints about the world, and I told him that we probably have more in common than not. He relaxed even more, and eventually I got a smile out of him. Finally, I said, I had to go, or we were going to miss our movie. Hey, man, he said, holding out his hand. I'm sorry I called you that name. You're right, I don't know you. But the fact that you stopped and talked to me after I said that, well, maybe I should. Please accept my apology. I did, and we shook hands. I'd taken a risk for sure, but I'd had enough of this. There would be no more disrespecting or threatening me. And that was the attitude that made me safe, or as safe as one can be in this world. 
From now on, if you mess with me, there would be consequences. I may make you watch one of my movies. A few weeks, a few weeks later, I was back on The Tonight Show for the first time in quite a while. When it was over, I was leaving the stage, and a guy, the guy who was operating the boom microphone approached me. You probably don't remember me, he said nervously. I never thought I'd get to see you again or get the chance to talk to you one more time. I can't believe I get to do this. Do what, I thought. I braced myself for the man's soon-to-be broken hand. I never thought I'd get this chance to apologize to you, he said as tears started to come into his eyes. And now, here you are, and I get to say this. I was the guy who ruined your Oscar night. I'm the guy who yelled asshole into your ear right after you came off the stage. I, I, he tried to compose himself. I thought you were attacking the president, but you were right. He did lie to us. And I've had to carry this with me now all these years. And that I did that to you on your big night. I'm so sorry. By now he was shaking pretty bad. And all I could think of to do was to reach out and give him a huge hug. It's okay, man, I said. I accept your apology, but you don't need to apologize to me. You did nothing wrong. What did you do? You believed your president. You're supposed to believe the president. If we can't expect that as just the minimum from who's ever in office, then we're doomed. Well, he said, relieved. Thank you for understanding. Understanding, I said. This isn't about understanding. I've told this story for years about the first two words I hear, and then I got to hear a second word. Don't take that story from me. People love it. He laughed, and I laughed. There aren't many good stories like that. Of course there were. I had a ton of them. And I've been wanting to tell these stories for a long time. But they don't begin here in Burbank. Burbank is the end. They begin, <clears throat> the beginning began before I had even begun. And that goes into the next. Uh,